Now, and the debate over gun control taking over the Senate following three separate shootings in less than a week. Cheerleaders don't need to be shot when they walk into the wrong car. Teenagers don't need to be murdered because their music is too loud. Kids shouldn't fear for their life when they go to school or when they pick up their siblings from a house in the neighborhood. We can do better. President Biden also tweeting out yesterday about the need to ban assault rifles. This comes just three weeks after the deadly Nashville school shooting, which killed six people and prompted a tense exchange between New York Congressman Jabal Momin and Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey. Take a look. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, calm down. That, that's a, why, no, calm down. Just, children are dying. Nine-year-old children. The, the solution is not arming teachers. That's Have you ever worked in, in a school? school? Have you ever worked in a school? Have you ever worked in a school? A lot of emotions over this issue, right? Congressman never... Bowman now joining us this morning to discuss where exactly we go from here with these conversations that we have almost every time this happens, right? Congressman, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Good to be with you. So, Congressman, speaking of Nashville, uh, President Biden also saying that he's going to host those two Tennessee lawmakers, right, who were expelled and then reinstated to the state legislature for their stance on gun control, speaking out about tighter gun control measures there after that shooting. So w will you also be meeting with them by any chance? I have not been contacted as of yet, but regardless of who is invited to that meeting, we all have to be very loud, very clear, very consistent, and we have to keep pushing and fighting to for common sense gun legislation that the majority of the American people support. Mm -hmm. There are so many things we can do. A ban on assault weapons is one thing. We can have universal red flag laws. We can have universal background checks. We can close the loopholes as it relates to personal gun sales. We can do more to track guns from uh, illegal purchases or legal purchases, excuse me, but travel that travel illegally into states not like New York and others. Mm. We could do a much better job in terms of local law enforcement tracking guns and sharing data. There's so much we can do, but instead we're sacrificing our children's lives and innocent lives for the Second Amendment, mm. and that's just unacceptable. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about what's happening right here at home. Funeral services for 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis will be held tomorrow. She was shot to death when she and her friends just turned into the wrong driveway in upstate New York. You were just talking about some of the changes, but why do you think that what we have in place right now really isn't making any kind of a dent? At least that's what it seems. Well, it, it, it's not because what we have now doesn't have enough teeth to prevent the horrific mass shootings that we see and the shootings that we see in everyday communities. But a situation like this, this just speaks to the sort of degradation of our collective psychology mm. as Americans. You know, the news, not you guys, but news media often push, pushes out so much fear and division mm -hmm. to the point where people are just knee-jerk reacting and shooting before even thinking. This is similar to the case uh, that took place with the yeah. with the young teenager, uh, you know, I'm forgetting the state right now, where he rang the wrong doorbell and was shot in the head, and, and thank God he's alive. But, I mean, knee-jerk reaction, not thinking. There's so much fear. I mean, look at what we all have been through collectively, a pandemic, an insurrection, the big yeah. lie. We need so much healing, and we need gun legislation. Yeah, and that, by the way, that was 16-year-old Ralph Yarl. Um, Thank you. It was in it was in Missouri. But let, let's talk about this, right? Because we're, we see so many instances. And forgive me for for this flippant question, right? But what else is it going to take, right? Because it, it, it just keeps on happening. And I feel like every time I ask the same question, what else is it going to take? Yes, I know you're passionate about the issue, but you're just one voice. How do you get the others and convince the others to vote for legislation? You know, quite honestly, we need to vote the right people into office and the wrong people out of mm. office, period. And there are opportunities to do this, not just on the House side, but to grow the proper numbers in the Senate. I mean, there are so many states, there are so many counties that underperform in elections. If we could be really strategic in targeting those states and counties to turn out the vote for people who want to see something done about gun violence and vote the right people in the office, 
we can get this done as early as the beginning of 2025 in a big way. Having said that, we got to do something right now. And I'm so happy that Senator Murphy and others mm. continue to push on the Senate side. I'm going to continue to push on the House side. And the American people are watching. They're watching who is acting and pushing and fighting and where the inaction is coming from. And they will respond next year at the polls. Yeah, but for now, I mean, congressional Republicans, they're, they're pushing to ease the gun restrictions. Florida recently approved a bill to allow um, concealed carry, even without a permit. So the now is what we have to think about. Do Democrats have enough votes in the House to actually get something done? We don't because we don't have the majority. So we're going to need Republicans to come on our side to get something done. And there are opportunities for negotiation there because they need Democratic votes on a few bills that are coming up, mm. uh, federal spending, the farm bill, and some other bills. So hopefully there could be compromise. And, you know, I hate to push things to 2025 because I'm not that kind of person, but people need to pay very close attention to how members of the House behave during this moment and the Senate. If yeah. we don't do anything on guns, we have to vote these people out of office in 2024. We have yeah, to. I know we're, we're out of time. I just want to ask you one qu one quick question here, and that's that's not t this is for the flip side of things. It's it's not to take away people's guns. It's just to legislate Correct. and make things tougher, which I think you know sometimes that gets lost well, in translation. Yeah. It's well regulated. The Second Amendment allows you to have guns, yeah. but we need well regulation, and right now we don't have the regulation. Got it. All right, Congressman Bowman, I appreciate you being here this morning to talk about this important issue. Thank you for having me. Keep us posted, okay? Yes.